Hello everyone, I am interested in doing book reviews on my channel and I am looking to do these book reviews for two reasons basically. The first, the, the first reason, sorry, is to show the, the, the progression of my book Purpose Driven, the ideas, how they developed across time with research. And the second reason is to promote critical thinking and the importance of re reading and, and how it's connected to critical thinking because a uh, good reader, somebody who reads a lot, have the ability to think critically on important issues and we cannot ignore the fact that there are very there are a lot of important issues in life so that for us to be able to think critically about those issues. So um, that's the two reasons why I am embarking on this journey of doing book reviews. Alright, the first book that I'm going to review is called The Gifted Hands by Ben Carson. Gifted Hands by Ben Carson. It's a very inspirational book. And uh, uh, that's one of the first books I read on my on my journey of, of, of writing my two books, Purpose Driven and Giant Magical Fans. It's a very interesting read. So I'm going to go through this book review uh, in, a, in, a, in a structured, of my, I'm going to try my best to make it a structured approach. And I will try to do it in less than 10 minutes. I will not be able to speak on all the ideas in the book, but what really stood out for me. The first thing I'm going to discuss is the author. Who is the author of the book? And that's important when you're reviewing a book and when you're reading a book. I like to read about the author, know what the author is about, know the worldview that the author has. And a lot of those, and, and understanding a lot about the author gives you a, a good gives you a good foundation in reading the book and trying to understand what the author is saying. So the author, as I said, is Ben Carson. His name is Ben Carson and the title of the book is Gifted Hands. So his full name is Benjamin Solomon Carson. Uh, he was born September 18, 1951 and is an American retired neurosurgeon. He was also involved, he, he's still alive, uh, sorry about that, he's still alive. He's, he, he was also involved in politics. He was a politician who served as the 17th and the 17th United States Secretary of Housing and Urban Development from 2017 to 2021. And he wrote that book, like he wrote that book in basically telling a story about his life, the narrative structure of who Ben Carson is, who he was and how he journeyed the developmental stages, what I find very fascinating in my personal life, um, speaking on the developmental process of human beings and my holy grail, what I want to find out in my research and in my book, some persons realize that I've written books and I'm doing conversations and on YouTube and I'm doing those things. What I'm trying to find out or what my holy grail is or what my life objective is, is to try to find out whether or not there is an objective way to view life and there is whether there is objective behaviors or objective principles which guides life. And that's what's very interesting about this book. He listed out uh, a lot of principles, if you didn't mention whether or not it was objective, of saying it's objective, what I'm trying to say when I say it's objective, whether it works for different persons across a different time, a different, a different time and space, different landscapes. So that's what I'm trying to find out. And reading, those, reading this book was both inspirational and it gives me an understanding a little into the objectivity that I'm searching for in existence. So. That's basically it for about the author. What is the author known for? Ben Carson. What is Ben Carson known for? He is considered a pioneer in the field of neurosurgeon. The word pioneer here means that he came up with some new aspects. He came up with some 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 new strategies in the field of neurosurgery. And neurosurgery, sorry, is a very interesting field because it has to do with the mind the mind is a very interesting organ a very delicate organ because that gives off the the, the, the imaging of, of our conscious experiences and and if something goes bad or if something is wrong mentally something is wrong with the structure with the organ the brain because the organ 
the brain and the mind as two different things. The brain is the organ and the mind is the activity which which it, 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 it shines through the, 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 the organ. So if something is wrong with that delicate um, um, organ, Dr. Ben Carson, a neurosurgeon, he and his team has to come here and try and fix the structure of that. And he became the director of pediatric neurosurgery at John Hopkins at John Hopkins uh, Children's Center in 18, in 1984, at the age of 43. Very young, he had that achievement. Then he became the youngest chief of pediatric neurosurgery in the United States. Very important. You might be saying, but why is that something that is important? Why he, him achieving something, wouldn't it? It's easy for, no, well, it's not easy, but why would he highlight that? Why is that, is that something that I'm highlighting right now? Because understanding the, 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 the landscape, the time which he had these achievements or the person that he was and his environment, his past, the life that he was living that allowed him to achieve such things, it is very interesting to note that. And that's why, that, and that's, the, that's the, the foundation of inspiration, the inspiration comes from uh, the, the aspect of uh, persons achieving certain things that is almost impossible for them to be achieving those things and that's why that book was interesting to me so why did i choose why did i choose that particular book why did i read a book in almost 300 pages um uh, the reason why the, the title got me gifted hands because there was this other book that I was reading by Miles Monroe, The Power and Purpose of Men, an interesting book. And he mentioned five questions that you need to answer to guide your life. And those five questions is those five questions are who are you? One of them, interesting question, where are you from? Where are you going? Why are you here? That's your purpose. That's the idea that I built my my my, my book on. And what is your gift? And that's one of the things that's very interesting in finding who you are, finding out your gift. And the term gifted hands shows that Ben Carson knew what his gift was and he, he articulated that very well in the book. And I'm just going to read a part of the book where he said that. And he said, somewhere during that period of time, I highlighted that, somewhere during that period of time, I became acutely aware of an unusual ability, a divine gift. I believe of extraordinary eye and hand coordination. It's my belief that God gives us all gifts, special abilities that we have the privilege of developing to help us serve Him and humanity. And the gift of eye and hand coordination has been an invaluable asset in surgery. This gift goes beyond eye-hand coordination, encompassing the ability to understand physical relationships, to think in three dimensions. So his gift is basically being able, it's, it's a, he has spatial intelligence, as, as, as we would say. Um, Howard Gardner would call that spatial intelligence, the ability to see and the ability to do things with your hands that other persons aren't able to do. That's why the sensitivity of neurosurgeon and dealing with a neurosurgery and dealing with the brain the person must be very precise because the brain is a very delicate or a very delicate organ so the main characters in in in, in the in the book is he, he spoke about his brother the relationship with his brother um his father went to prison at a very early age and his mother was a very critical or very important person in his life always encouraging him always because when he had attended school he thought he was stupid he was saying that to himself like he was stupid he's not smart he's ignorant and all those things and his mother kept changing the story that he kept telling himself and that's the important that's a beautiful thing about the mind what you say to yourself is that what you act out and his mother kept telling him he's intelligent he's smart he'll be able to do anything that he wants to do and he actually said in the book that he saw the words of his mother play out and he started believing in himself some more um what did i learn or what fascinated me um by, by reading the book from the book ben carson gifted hands many things oh many fascinating things in the book um but i'm going to touch on three uh because of time the first thing is ben carson's journey from a young boy in the inner city 
with it's, it's almost like in our in our local palace we call that the ghetto almost all odds were against him and he became a world renowned surgeon all odds were against him his father was in his father was in prison his mother had a mental disorder and he battled racial injustice in that time and space that landscape there was a lot for a young black man to be able to go to college to get a scholarship to do all those things it was not difficult to say but it wasn't something that it wasn't a, a household thing so he had to battle all of that and at the end of the day he he rose against all the negative things that could have held him back all the negative things that he could have complained and say i'm, I, I'm unable to live a good life because of the situation that i'm born in and uh, david wiggins a uh, thinker and his contemporary call that firmness you don't have the the choice as to where you're born you're just thrown into existence and that's and you're just here and you have to deal with these problems it's like you're in a game of cards and you dealt a, a hand and you have to play that hand and you have to be strategic you you didn't choose your cards and that's what he went through um and and, and he dealt with he dealt with his part of existence very well he became a world-renowned surgeon and the principles that got him there that's what he wrote in that book and it's a very interesting book the second thing that really caught my attention in this book is while at john hopkins carson figured in figured out a drastic surgical procedure in which parts in, in which parts or all of one hemisphere of the brain is removed to control severe pediatric epilepsy and that's just it's interesting to note that because he, he discovered that he's a, a black man neurosurgeon and he discovered how to deal with severe epilepsy that's in, in children and one of the ways that he discovered that is a, a very 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 difficult procedure where part of the brain is, is removed the region of the brain is removed and what's fascinating about that and he note that as well in the book that that's so fascinating that you remove a region of the brain and you remove part of the brain and the individual still has normal consciousness the individual is not losing any form of behavior the, the, the child still behaves properly they still live a healthy life and he was saying he, he made the the aspect he, he made the note in the book that we don't understand consciousness because of that we don't understand what constitutes the seat of consciousness because if we could if the brain can be not, not damaged but if part of the brain can be removed to help in a severe epileptic episode that means and that's why i learned the term neuroplasticity that's the, the, the brain fixes itself uh towards if something is wrong on one end like if part is missing uh, the, the the localization is placed in, an, in another place and that's where that is very interesting that's a very interesting thing to know and it, it is, it's very interesting and he spoke about that at length because he likes the mind he likes the brain that's why he's a neurosurgeon and and i think he became a neurosurgeon because he knew his mother had some the mental disorder and he wanted to help his mother and he wanted to uh, fix the world in the, in, the, in the same breath and the second the third thing that fascinated me about the uh, that that book uh, what happened in the book is the separation of the Siamese twins uh you know, Siamese twins are individuals who were well, children who were born and part of the body is stuck together and this one it was the brain that the head they were stuck together from the head and he separated that and that was such a fascinating um I mean, surgical procedure that he became world renowned on something like that it was very difficult nobody has ever didn't in that time achieve something as as, as great as that and my takeaway my personal response and impressions of the book and what i take away from it is that it, it and one of the things that that Calvin said that I, I put it in my children's book the giant magical pants is it's not it, it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what happened to you it doesn't matter where you come from it, what matters is what you choose to become you have a choice free will is something that is given to all of us and don't we and just like ben carson didn't allow his circumstances to define who he was i think the message in that book is not like the circumstances define who he was you have the ability to choose to become whoever you want to become and that's a very interesting takeaway from this book
Uh, there is also a movie of this book. Anybody who wants to read this book, I think it's very important. I think it would be a very nice read. Um, it's a very inspirational one, and it's very informative. Uh, thank you for listening, and look out for my next book review next week. Thank you. How many did you get right? None. You think he gets one? Hey girl, you're the dumbest kid in the world. So what happened? You weren't meant to be a failure, Benny. And you can control your temper, but and you can bring your grades up too, I know you can. I'm dumb, mother! No, you ain't. You a smart boy. You just ain't using that smartness. Now, if you keep getting grades like that, you're going to spend the rest of your life mopping floors in a factory, and that ain't the life I want for you. You boys watch too much television. You're going to go to the library and pick out two books, and at the end of the week, you're going to hand me a written report about what you read. You cannot possibly survive it on television. Well, you're going to start now. Why you waste all that time watching the TV? If you use that time to develop your God-given gifts, wouldn't be long before folks was watching you on TV.